doesn't show up very well on camera, but there's definitely a line there. There's a lip right there. And back here, you can see that one really well. See right there? Anything like that, you gotta remove. There was lips uh, right here on either side. I'm removing those. Now I gotta on this corner here, hmm, I gotta remove that little lip, make it a smooth flow. Same thing with over here, make it a smooth flow. Right here, remove the actual edges. Everything has to be smooth. Why does everything have to be smooth? Because every little bump, all right, it's not so much that it makes the, the, the air and fuel mixture go like that. It's whenever the fuel goes over a bump, what we're left with right here is a negative pressure. We've got to remove all of those little spots where it creates a negative pressure because <clears throat> if you don't, it becomes kind of like whitewater rafting. And now you want your air and fuel mixture to tumble. You want it to tumble, but you don't want it to be volatile and, and tossed about all over the place. You still want it to flow smoothly, okay? Think of it as water coming out of a garden hose, smoothly flowing versus taking that same water and making it go over rocks. Every time you do, there are pressure changes. And you want to avoid that because that slows down your mixture. Got me? So I'm gonna get back to this. I'll, I'll show you what I come up with. All right. So this one is done. This is the Red Max cylinder. Um, I didn't touch the transfer, the upper transfers at all. Uh, so with my numbers, they probably have 15 degrees of blowdown, just guess. Usually these things run with about 12 degrees of blowdown, I think. And uh, I raised the exhaust, the exhaust three degrees. So uh, what we have is, here's the exhaust, we got it lightly polished you know me i do not believe in a mirror finish at all um the bulk of the work was done right here so there was a ledge there we cut it off and then we smoothed everything out going down in all the little bumps there were bumps right here we're smooth now there were bumps right here, right here, of course, right there, right there, and 
right there. Everything's nice and smooth. It's gonna flow in there really nice. All right. Um, before the charge had to go over this wall, then down, and then clunk, 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 clunk its way down in through here. There were all kinds of different hurdles. Now it's all smooth and it should flow nice. Uh, so we will see. You know, uh, somebody was, Dave, I think a couple people mentioned it. I know Dave mentioned it. I think somebody else. But um, I think the thought process, and I had thought it, I just, it just still doesn't make sense to me. The thought process of the charge coming over here on the exhaust side, right? I was talking about that before. It goes in, down, up into the front, and around before it goes back into the cylinder. That's a lot of extra distance. Someone else said that they added that because they had to slow the charge down. Uh, I don't believe that. Um, uh, somebody mentioned that uh, with cars, uh, the intake runners are gonna, they, longer intake runners typically mean more torque. Shorter intake runners typically mean higher RPM. Um, and may, maybe they had those thoughts in their mind. Maybe that that was why, you know, they wanted to slow it down because they wanted this thing to peak horsepower somewhere around 11,000, 10,000 RPMs instead of 12, 13,000. I don't know. Uh, but, um, but they did it. But the, what Super Dave said, and I have heard this before, is that the reason the intake charge is over here on the exhaust side is to help cool that side of the cylinder. I don't buy it. Um, I mean, they that may have been what they were thinking whenever they designed it, but this one ain't set up like this, All right? Um, so even though they may have had that thought in their head, is it needed? Well, I know that X torques produce a lot more heat than um, a standard cylinder like what is over there on the on the Echo. I get that, I, I really do. But it's kind of like a lipstick on a pig type of thing. The cylinder is producing more heat and so they're doing anything that they can in order to combat that whenever what they should be doing is not producing so much heat. Um, there's a lot going on in the world. EPA is just a small faction of what's going on in the world. Um, but I, I kind of feel like manufacturers need, need to stop playing EPA's game. Um, Yeah, but that's a different subject. Whatever. I, I'm looking at this and I, I, I'm thinking maybe they did do it so they would cool the exhaust side because that's where most of your heat is anyways. But if that was the reason they did it, I don't know. It's kind of flaky to me. I think that it was probably more along the lines of yeah, I think I'm probably more along the lines of the torque. And then they add in, they add in this idea that, it, oh, and it also helps cool the exhaust side. See, that's what people get mis mistaken with the Hemi all the time. They think that what makes a Hemi, you know, the old, the old Dodge Hemis, what makes the Hemi is the big pop-up piston is what it is. That is not what makes a Hemi. That was just a marketing strategy. And that's it. Um, can it be a side benefit? I guess, you know, the weight of that. A lot of people tend to like the weight of those big pistons. They say it adds more, more torque. But no, I ain't buying that at all. What makes a Hemi a Hemi is the great big valves. Uh, and so in order to get those great big valves in there, they had to cant them at a very steep angle, right? So they were going in like that. And that left a great big, huge, wide open combustion chamber. And so they said, well, our compression's too low. Let's make this crazy pop-up piston. 
and let's call it the Hemi. The Hemi was just a marketing strategy. It was all about the valve train. That's what makes a Hemi a Hemi. <laughs> it's all about the valve train. The flow goes in and directly out. And you got two great big old huge valves that they would never have been able to put in uh, if they had kept them flat like they used to do. That's a Hemi. The piston is just a byproduct of what makes a Hemi a Hemi. And I think that's probably what's going on with this too. They probably were wanting that extra length because of something like the, um, the, uh, the intake runner length, uh, having some sort of effect that they liked and desired. And then marketing got a hold of it and said, Hey, and it cools the exhaust side. Of course, we'll never really know unless we literally talk to the engineer that designed this shit before it was actually even made, you know, because even them, they'll get tainted by what the media says. And uh, anyways, I just don't believe that they did this because they were cooling the exhaust side. I see that as a byproduct of why they would make the runners like this. Eh, just a thought. Um, so, but this one's done. I guess uh, I should tell you the numbers. So I took 40 thousandths off the base. That put me as close as I wanted to be to the transfer bolts. I got about nine thousandths of an inch before I hit the top of the transfer bolt, I think, uh, or the bottom, I mean or bottom of the transfer cap, I should say. Uh, so 40 thousandths off the base, 40 thousandths off the squish, which gives me 19 thousandths um, squish, right? So cut the chamber there. And now a byproduct of doing this, you see that right there? That is where the compression release used to be. Because I'm, I'm afraid that, so I put a plug in there, because I'm afraid that if Forrest, whenever he gets this, if he ever decides to use this compression release, that's going to poke down enough to where the piston's going to come up and smack it. And if that's the case, then um, then he's going to have a permanent air leak if, if I went that route. So um, we're at 107 on the exhaust, uh, 81 degrees on the intake, 40 degrees from the base, 40 degrees from the squish. Of course, it took about 45 degrees from the bottom of this piston skirt. We cut out the, the wall that was uh, blocking. It was about yay high. We cut that out completely and we flow in smoothly from side to side. We did nothing to any of the transfer ports and I almost did nothing to the uh, intake. I just roughed it up a little bit and I dropped it down about uh, three degrees. So, yeah, 50,000, uh, 40,000, 40 thousandths, uh, 107 degrees, 81 degrees. So, we'll put this thing back together and um, get started on the Echo.